Coach Corey Wayne and this is my video coaching newsletter and the topic of this newsletter is going to be my ex and her family are nuts. Well this email that I got that I'm going to go through is a doozy. It kind of is up there with the guy, the, the one I did a few months ago about this guy who was dating a prostitute and all the drama that went along with it. This woman apparently is bipolar and not only that, it sounds like her whole family is a bunch of fucking whack jobs. So before we get into it, I've got a quote I'd like to share with you. And it says, you are a magnificent divine being having a human experience. You deserve to be loved and treasured by people who genuinely appreciate you for you instead of what they can take from you. Unhappy people will often project their own unhappiness and misery onto you because they are jealous and envious, not because you have done anything wrong. Be happy anyway, and remember that no one will ever do or say anything that isn't a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves in a moment. So let's get into this guy's email. He says, Hey Corey, I found out about your website a few weeks ago, and I've been watching your videos religiously and learning and using your methods with some success. I'd share with you a story about my ex-girlfriend. I met her on an online dating site and we dated for about three years. She has bipolar disorder but isn't getting treated because her parents are in denial. Last year we broke up for three months and she had a rebound fling with another guy. Ultimately, we both still had feelings for each other and got back together. At first things went great but then the same problems we had last time turned around, only much worse. Well, that's one of the things that I've noticed over the years, like me personally, like some of the women I wrote about in my book that I was able to successfully reattract and those methods I still teach this day for guys that wanna get their exes back. The thing is, is that when you get that person back who you thought was the one or that you lost the greatest love of your life, most of the time and in most cases, the guy's not gonna stay with her long term and that's exactly for that that reason is because after the excitement and the newness wears off and the fact that you've got them back again it's those same things that irritate irritated you in the first place about them well they're still there they, it's not that they go away and it's interesting because we tend to project our high attraction level on the members of the opposite sex and just assume they feel the same way and it's like we ignore all the red flags along the way he says, my ex-girlfriend still lives with her parents and her mother is a major control freak. I wonder where their problems came from. He's, the interesting thing about kids and even the family pets is, is that the children and the family pets will take on the, sta the same spinal pattern and body physiology that the parents have. That's one of the cool things I love about network care. As a network chiropractic doctor can literally look at the physiology and the spinal patterns of your family dog before he's even seen the rest of your family and your kids and tell pretty much what emotional and mental state your whole family is in because everybody tends to entrain together. And all of your parents, fears, weaknesses, insecurities, doubts, and weird hangups, they tend to pass those on to their children. He says, when we first got back together, my ex was taking bipolar medication, but afterwards her mom switched her meds and told her doctor that she was fine without them. Now her doctor thinks she was misdiagnosed. Since her father is also a lawyer, I believe her parents might have also threatened the doctor with a lawsuit. <sighs> you got a lot of combination for a lot of explosive things here in this family. Mother's a control freak, father's a lawyer, the daughter has bipolar disorder. Hmm. He says, her mother made it no secret that she never wanted us to get back together since she blamed me for my ex's bipolar diagnosis. That's definitely not taking any responsibility because obviously your ex-girlfriend was this way before you ever met her. He says, she always made up lies about me and said that I was rude and disrespectful to her Maybe her mother's the one that's bipolar, was disrespectful to her, but every time I tried to be friendly and talk to her, she'd scowl at me and blow me off. Boy, I, can you just imagine what the holidays were like 
Oh my God. I mean, my family, you know, like when I remember I was, I was younger, my mother and her sister, they used to fucking fight and go at it. They would just get pissed off the littlest things. And I remember one time my aunt like stormed off and took my younger cousin with her and she's like, come on, we're, we're leaving. And my uncle was like, no, we're not going anywhere. He basically told her that she was being a jackass, which she was at the time. And she stormed off. And so my, my, my little cousin, she didn't get to open her gifts with the rest of us. It's just, it's just bullshit. It's just bullshit, crazy, fucking whacked out drama. He says, she constantly questioned whether I was serious about a commitment and even said that I was gay because she didn't think I wanted to get married. Man, dude. He says, my ex was never supportive of any of my interests. Well, obviously, she probably didn't have many interests of her own that she was very happy about. It's just like I said in that quote, we tend to project on other people. What It's like when we don't like something about ourselves, we tend to attack that in another person. Like if we really want to do something that we love for a living but we're too scared when we encounter someone – who's living their life and living their dreams and really excited and really happy, well, I think, oh, that, that. And that's what, that's what people typically tend to do is to attack in the other person what they're disconnected to in themselves. He says, she hated when I joined a Sunday kickball league with a friend even though she worked on that day. Yeah, she's just a miserable, unhappy person and she doesn't like you having fun and being happy. When she's not there, or she's not there to make you miserable, or bring it, tear you down to her level. He says, she expected us to spend all of our free time together, and I was expected to sit and wait at home when she was at work and then meet her after she got off. That sounds like some control freak tendencies. I wonder where she got that from. He says, any outside interest I had were seen as proof that her mother was right about me. You know, what's interesting is like when my dad proposed to my mother and she accepted and they were going to get married. The interesting thing that was kind of crazy is my grandfather, my mother's father, had actually been married and had a whole other family. And then sometime after World War II, I guess after he came back from the war, he totally abandoned his family and walked away from it. And he never spoke to their kids, his kids. That he, I mean, can you imagine your own flesh and blood? just completely walked away, never spoke to them the rest of his life. And he had three daughters with my grandmother and none of them ever knew about the other family that he had. And he wanted them to all basically become a bunch of old maids and stay at home. And the oldest sister actually did that and she lived at home until both parents had, had obviously passed away and then she obviously inherited the house. But when my he, – he, it was the same thing. He didn't approve – of my mother and my father dating because he wanted my mother to stay at home and become an old maid basically. Maybe that's probably because he felt guilty that he had abandoned his first family. And so he actually drives over to my dad's house and begs my father not to marry my mother and he says, I will pay you basically to go away. And obviously when my dad's mother heard about that, you know, can you imagine she wasn't too excited about that. And so that kind of set the stage between both families. It's just, it's just, man, fucking holidays. Do you ever see that movie, uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? It's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. It's like, that's kind of like some of that shit that went on. There was like what went on with my family. Just fucking nastiness and bitterness. And it's like as a kid growing up, you don't know any better. But it's like as you get older, you go, wow, that's really fucked up. He says she also hated the friends I had because they weren't in relationships. It all started to unravel when she could no longer control her explosive temper. Well, I wouldn't say it's that she couldn't control it. It's that she chose not to control it. And how do I know? It's like how many times have you been in a heated conversation with somebody throughout your life or watched somebody, maybe a parent or a couple of parents having an argument or having a heated discussion and the phone rings and they go from, ah, to, hi, how are you? Oh, everything's great here. Nice to hear from you. So it's, it's a conscious choice. She just chose to let herself lose control. He says she constantly argued with me, sometimes in front of her family and even in public places. He says my parents wouldn't allow me to bring her to family gatherings after she berated me in front of them. Well, part of the thing is that you tolerated that. 
Because the first time she starts berating you like that, you should have said, don't fucking talk to me like that in front of my family. That's totally inappropriate. And if you want to continue to have me in your life, you're going to apologize and you're never going to talk that way to me again. So what's it going to be? Sometimes you got to stand up and show your spine because no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. And when you just go along with bullshit like that, you're giving her permission to do it. Not only that, it's like you embolden her and it only gets worse over time, which is obviously what you said has happened. He says, but while I was extremely embarrassed by this, she never saw anything wrong with it. Yeah, you obviously didn't put your foot down. He says, for nearly three months, I tried to break up with her, but she never accepted it. He says, sometimes she refused to allow me to leave her house unless I reconsider. Oh, man. He says, it got worse one night when I was driving her home and she decided to rehash an old argument. When I tried to break up with her again, she started hitting me over the head with a book while I was driving. Oh, that's, that's a safe way to drive. Holy fuck, dude. It's like I'm thinking witness protection program. Jesus Christ. He says, then she refused to leave my car unless I backed off. That's when she gets out of the car and, and you, as you're driving off, you roll the window down. And he goes, now nah, I'm just bullshit. I'm fucking done with you. I want to ever see your crazy ass again. Have a nice life. Then you floor it and spin out, squeal your tires. He says, the following week after I canceled my plans with her, and she furiously berated me on the phone. I broke up with her over email and blocked her email addresses, phone numbers, and Facebook page. Good for you for finally having the balls to stand up to her. He says the timing of the breakup was also problematic as it occurred around the same time her grandmother died. Well, yeah, you're conveniently ignoring the fact that she fucking beat you over the head with a, a book. It's like, come on, man. He says in the two months since we've broken up, I've been spending a lot of time with friends and have even been on a few dates. Listen to what he says next. He says, it's been fun and I can't remember the last time I felt this happy or excited about my life. Dude, that's your fucking birthright. That's the whole reason why we're here on this planet is to have a good time, is to enjoy our lives, to make it a masterpiece, to make it what you want. And you can't do anything about the fact that your girlfriend came from a fucked up family and that she's a fucking whack job. It's not your problem. And no amount of you feeling bad about her or bad about the situation or bad about the fact that her mother is a whack job control freak is going to make it any better. The best thing you can do for you is to make your, your life the way you want it and to continue to enjoy yourself. Because if you go along with this bullshit, all you're going to do is make yourself miserable because she's already miserable and you can't do anything about that. He says, my ex, however, has continued to find a way to contact me. Sometimes she begs me for another chance and other times she berates me for breaking up with her. It's like, you know, who is this? Uh, I'm sorry, you got the wrong number. Click. He says, she even started asking friends to find out who I was dating and has berated them when they wouldn't tell her. He says, recently I found out that she was in a serious car accident and that some believe might have been a suicide attempt. Or she's trying to get attention. It's not your fault, dude. It's not your job to fix her. It's not your job to rescue her. You know, one of the things that I, I teach to my clients all the time is that you got to participate in your own rescue. It's like nobody else is going to do it for you. It's the person that you see in the mirror is the one that's responsible for your happiness and your success and your own welfare. And you know, some people, it's like her parents are in denial and it's like she has to get to a place in her life because it's until people hit rock bottom, until their belief system no longer works for them, they won't do anything to change it. And there's nothing you can do about it. You obviously got to a point where you're like, I'm fucking done with this bullshit. I'm fucking out of here. I'm off like a fucking prom dress. Fuck this noise. And you, you took some steps to make yourself happy. That's what led you obviously to my website. I'm glad that you're doing that. Because what we need is more people in the world living from their own internal power and doing the things that they want to do and being happy because if you're happy you're going to impact the happiness of your friends your family the women you date and everybody that you encounter in your life and your happiness and you're embracing your own divinity and living your life and following your true purpose it unconsciously gives everybody around you permission to do the same that's how you become a leader you become a beacon of light. You become the person that everybody wants to be around. 
everybody wants to hang around because you just make people feel good when you're around because you're positive, you're upbeat, you always got a kind word to say, you always got a positive word of advice and encouragement when you see somebody that's down. It's like it doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve the world to play small. It's just like what Nelson Mandela said. He says, it, it does not, basically he said, it doesn't serve you or the world to play small. I can't remember the exact quote, but it was a really badass quote. I've shared it in a bunch of my articles in the past. He says, even though I have no intention of ever getting back together with my ex, thank God, dude. He says, I'm a little worried about what might happen if she were to find out I was dating again. What does she think is going to happen? It's like, hello. It's like you broke up with her so you could find someone new. He says, especially since one of the women I've been seeing lives in the same area as my ex. Maybe it's time to get a new car. Maybe it's time to have this girl drive to where you live. He says, even though I really like this girl and I'm having a lot of fun hanging out with her, I don't want to be put into a situation where I'd be blamed for driving my ex off the deep end. It's not your fucking problem, bro. You can wipe your hands. It's You did the best you could. You gave this chick three years and she still decided to be a fucking wacko. It's not your problem. Let her... Let her, let her mother and her father deal with that bullshit and the next poor bastard that comes along and dates her. He says, I wouldn't want this other woman to be in a position where she could possibly be harmed. I hate to see this happen, but I know I can't help her. Good. You're right. You, nothing you can do about it. He says, is it a good idea to keep dating? Well, obviously you're worried about her physically, you know, some kind of physical altercation happening. Be honest with her. Say, you know, I dated... I have an ex-girlfriend that lives near you and she's fucking bipolar and she's she's wacky. And so I just would rather not go on that side of town where you live because I don't want to run into her. So how about we meet out? How about you come over to my side of town and have her come to where you are? And just be honest about the situation because that's all you can really do. Because it would be better to be honest about it than to just you know, have it sprung on her. If you're If it's really that much of a concern, if you really think that obviously there is a – a danger that it's going to create that kind of a problem, then then just don't go on that side of town. Like I said, have her have her come to you and have her come to where you're at, and just say, you know, quite frankly, the reason I don't, I would love to come see you if you lived in a different part of town, I would come pick you up. I'd be chivalrous and everything. He says, well, my ex is kind of a fucking wacko, and I don't want her seeing me or my car, and you know, I don't want to cause him problems for us because I think you're a great girl. So that's that's the best way that you can handle that particular situation. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking a paid phone or Skype session. Or if you'd like to talk to me through email, I also do email coaching. And you can also click the products tab and follow the instructions for booking through PayPal. And I will talk to you soon. 